All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Senior Tech Coffee. Um, I'm your host, Patrick Baker, and today we're talking about older adult personal safety tech. Um, first, a little plug for me. Um, uh, you know, I've been in business for 30 years. I'm sorry, I've been in IT for 30 years. Uh, I've only been in business uh, as Prime of Life Tech for about a little over one year. Uh, uh, starting at the 1st of July. So pretty happy about that. Anyhow, uh, what are we going to talk about today? Um, so uh, today I want to talk about, among other things, um, the, the personal safety tech that uh, folks can use for fall detection and medical alerts, um, as well as maintaining their routines and uh, also how we can keep uh, family and caregivers informed. And in addition to that, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll uh, have some time for any Q&A that you might have. Um, so, um, so what are we trying to solve with personal safety tech technology uh, for older adults? Well, I think one of the main things is we want to help older adults live at home for longer, right? Uh, we want to try to keep them out of um, uh, assisted living um, and to um, basically try to you know, maintain, help them maintain their quality of life, um, provide them with a sense of safety and security, uh, especially if they're on their own, uh, and also uh, helping them maintain their daily routines. Um, and then family and caregivers, they wanna be informed of what folks are doing and uh, how they're doing throughout the day. And so there's some different, uh, some technologies out there that can help with that. Now, uh, before I go any further, I just want to say that I'm not like, I'm not like plugging any of these specific technologies. Um, this is based on purely based on my own research and uh, basically trying to address some of these issues. So um, folks may have opinions about certain products uh, and that sort of thing. And I'm not, uh, I'm not really here to debate that. So um, anyhow, I just wanted to throw that out there that it's, this isn't really me plugging anyone's product. So anyhow, so let's talk about uh, fall detection and medical alerts. So I wanted to focus specifically on three different things. Um, some of the capabilities of the Apple Watch, uh, some a kind of a very brief overview of some of the different medical alert systems that are out there. And there's a, there's there's many, um, and then in addition, uh, there's a product called Wallabot that looked interesting to me. I thought it was worth mentioning. So, uh, so let's talk first about the Apple Watch. So the Apple Watch is a smartwatch. Uh, I think they're coming out with version six. I want to say uh, here in the next uh, the next couple of months, um, and you know, an Apple Watch. First off. It's, uh, it's a good thing for um, uh, basically if you wanted to basically, it, well, first off, let me back up a second. You can pair it with your, with your iPhone and you have to have an iPhone really to get the most out of an Apple Watch, in my opinion. Um, they do have the ability to work standalone, but it's in a fairly limited capacity. Um, anyhow. Among other things, what you can do with an Apple Watch is you can tie it into things like your um, uh, the, the iMessage app that you have on your phone, uh, the fitness apps that you have on your phone, uh, as well as um, things like uh, your calendar. So what that looks like is, you know, you get um, like notifications on your phone or on your watch rather the same way that you would on your phone. So if you have, for example, an upcoming doctor's appointment, or maybe um, you have a, um, an app like uh, Plant Nanny, which uh, reminds you to um, you know, stay hydrated and to drink water at different times of the day. But in terms of the safety features, um, the, uh, the main thing that I, that I honed in on is uh, the fall detection. Uh, there was an article in some um, one of the one of the news uh, one of the news websites in recent months, talked to, talking about a 91 year old man in Nebraska, who was up on a ladder like painting his barn or something, and he fell off the ladder, 
and his he was unconscious. He was wearing the Apple Watch, and it essentially gives you like a, I want to say maybe a 30 second countdown when it detects a fall for you to essentially tap that, that button there that says, I'm okay. And if you don't do that, um, or if you need help, you can tap on the emergency SOS button there um, and you can alert, uh, basically you're calling emerg 911 in effect um, or, and or your emergency contacts. Um, but, only you know one call at a time in addition uh in the case of the gentleman from nebraska he was unconscious and so it uh the the countdown whatever 30 seconds elapsed and then it immediately alerted authorities and he got the help that he needed so um you know he was lucky that he had that um some other safety features that the uh, the Apple Watch has are um, it has this feature called medical ID, and you should have actually that same thing on an iPhone, for that matter, anyone who has an iPhone. And essentially, what that is is all of your pertinent medical information that you would want someone to know about. Same thing as like the the um, the ID bracelets or the the necklaces that you used to see folks wear all the time, at least when I was growing up. Those were the like the medical alert bracelets that indicated that you had some sort of pre-existing condition that a an emergency emergency responder would need to uh, be aware of. Um, so similar uh, kind of thing, you can basically say, you know, these are the these are the medications I'm on. You know, these are the uh, conditions that I have uh, as far as my health is concerned, and that can let um, emergency responders know in the same manner, only with a lot more detail. Um, the other thing that the Apple Watch does that I've found really interesting is they've found over time that it is sensitive enough to detect heart irregularities. So uh, things like, um, um, uh, well, what's that word I'm thinking of? Afibulation, afib, um, as well as um, like heart murmurs, those types of things. I mean, it's not, as sophisticated as like having a you know fully wired up EKG kind of thing, but it does uh, detect um, heart irregularities in addition to the fall detection. So um, I thought those were interesting features. Um, go ahead if you have questions, you can feel free to jump in. Well, I'm sorry, sorry. What version of the um, Apple Watch does the uh, um, heart irregularities? Do you know? Um, I think. I want to say, I know, if, I think version five, the most recent one uh, that's that's been in production for a while, I'm pretty sure it does. I'm not 100% sure about version four. Thank you. Sure. Um, so medical alert systems. Um, medical alert systems, um, they frequently include uh, the fall detection feature as well. This is like the I've fallen and I can't get up type of product um, where you, you wear a uh, like a pendant or you might have a, um, you know, a wrist mounted or a fob type of thing like on your on your keys or that you hook to your belt um, that similar to what you see in the picture there on the, the, the smaller devices where basically you press the button and you're connected with someone who can uh, speak with you about whatever's going on, uh, whatever the emergency situation is. These are some of the products that are out there um, that uh, um, manufacture these systems. And essentially what they um, consist of are, um, as I mentioned, either a pendant, a fob, or like a wrist, a wrist mounted, uh, device that you wear on your person and you keep with you. Um, they are either designed to work with the landline or they're often mobile. I'm not sure if there's a hybrid version of that. Um, and they also, as I mentioned, include the fall detection uh, as well as the ability to, you know, manually trigger an alert. Um, and then the base station, uh, like you saw in the picture in the previous slide, that's basically a, um, a way for the, um, the service that you're using to uh, include, uh, or I'm sorry, to um, initiate two-way communication with the service. So that will be the way that they, they speak to you effectively uh, is through that service. 
or through that station, that base station, excuse me. Um, anyhow, um, one of the things uh, that you should be aware of if you're looking into these systems is to, you know, just to make sure that all the costs and the contract details are clearly identified, um, just so that you're very clear on what you're paying for, uh, both upfront and on a monthly basis, because these services or systems rather um, have a, a subscription effectively. Um, you wanna make sure that the cancellation policy is very clear uh, so that you know, you're not locked into something that maybe after 30 days you decide that, eh, this maybe isn't the right uh, setup for me. Um, so you wanna be able to uh, cancel uh, on, a, on a reasonable basis. Um, the water, or I'm sorry, the devices, the wearable devices, you wanna make sure they are water resistant, uh, especially in the shower. I think, I don't remember the statistic, but the, um, the majority of falls that older adults experience happen in the bathroom. Uh, so you wanna make sure that they can take these devices with them into the, into the tub or the shower and, uh, and still be able to use them uh, if necessary. Um, in addition, uh, the, uh, the wearables, um, they often have GPS tracking, um, not a, uh, a standard feature with every system, but um, so that'll be a detail that you want to uh, check into if that's the type of thing that you're interested in. Um, this is a um, useful feature for folks if, if they wander off. Um, so just something to uh, uh, keep in mind when you're shopping for this type of thing. And then other systems also have multiple language support, uh, which is you know, good for uh, you know, folks uh, who don't have speak English as their first language. Um, I wanted to just um, also mention this product called the, the Wallabot. Essentially, it's a wall-mounted motion detection device. Uh, it's, it's designed for bathroom use, but you could install it in any room of the house. Um, there are no wearables involved, so you have to be in line of sight of this thing for it to work. Um, and it uses a radio frequency sensor for uh, fall detection. The uh, things like the Apple Watch um, or the um, uh, medical alert system uh, wearables, they use what's known as an accelerometer to detect um, a, a fall. Uh, basically, it's the same thing that's in your smartphone that when you rotate the phone and the display rotates, that's using an accelerometer um, just as a point of reference for something that might be familiar to you. <clears throat> Anyhow, um, there's a button on the Wallabot for you to initiate two-way two communication with a caregiver. Um, it uses Wi-Fi, so it doesn't have a, um, like a cellular connection or a landline detection, uh, connection. I'm pretty sure I'm remembering that detail correctly. Uh, but in addition, um, uh, you can, um, initiate an emergency call with the caregiver uh, if it detects a fall. And there is a way for you to cancel the, you know, the, the emergency uh, situation. Uh, so that if you, if you fell, but you're really okay, you can, you can essentially prevent the emergency call if you want to by manually disabling it uh, in, that, in that instance. <clears throat> uh, one other, couple of other things. Um, First off, this does not use a service like the medical alert systems that I was describing before. Um, and it, um, it also allows you to specify up to three emergency contacts. So, and it would basically do the round robin thing. If, uh, if it was in an emergency fall situation, it was trying to contact one of your um, caregivers it would basically cycle through all of them until it got an answer effectively. Um, anyhow, so there's uh, another um, in the fall detection uh, technology. Um, any questions at this point? Okay, all right. 
Then um, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, uh, smart speakers with emergency contacts. Um, you know, things like the Amazon Echo or Google Home or Google Nest. Um, those, uh, you know, you use those to, um, you know, you, I don't know if you have one in your home, um, but you can use them for a variety of things. You can essentially use them the way you use Google, like if you wanted to know uh, what's the temperature outside today, you know, you could ask Alaska, Alexa uh, to do that for you. Um, but in addition, you can program in emergency contacts. So for example, you could uh, plug in, say for uh, example, your, uh, um, you know, I could plug in my daughters, I could plug in um, my parents, they could plug me in as the emergency contact. And <clears throat> all you have to do is, you know, say, you know, hey, Google, um, call mom. And my phone just tried to do that. And so um, anyway, um, but the point is, is that that's a also, I would say a relatively low cost option for this type of uh, device. Um, you'd want to place, uh, you want to have more than one and you'd want to have them strategically placed uh, in different areas of the house. So for example, you'd probably want to have one in the bathroom, maybe the kitchen, uh, and or living room, uh, maybe the bedroom, that type of thing. You want to have them in enough locations so that you had adequate coverage uh, in the house. And if you've got the, the small ones, they're relatively uh, inexpensive. So that's just yet another option uh, for um, uh, emergency alerting for older adults. Anyhow, next I'd like to talk about um, technology that helps older adults maintain uh, their routines. Um, now, I think everybody is aware that, that <clears throat> routines are pretty important, not just for older adults, but for everybody. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but having a, a routine, uh, a daily routine, uh, especially right now um, with uh, the pandemic, uh, it really makes a difference for my mental health, uh, just having uh, some kind of routine. I'm not super dogmatic about my routine, and I don't have, uh, for example, I don't have medication that I have to take on a regular basis throughout the day, as an example. Um, I don't necessarily need to be reminded to hydrate throughout the day, but it probably wouldn't hurt to have those reminders. These are the kinds of things that I'm referring to in terms of routines uh, and how we can maintain those. So um, in terms of some of the applications for um, these, uh, the technology that I'm about to describe, um, you know, elders need, uh, need to be reminded when, they're, uh, when they have appointments. I need to be reminded when I have appointments. Um, also things like medication reminders, um, those are some of the, uh, solutions that I'll be describing here in just a, mo a moment. Um, but in addition, things like, um, stovetop and oven sensors, uh, specifically designed so that if, and, and I've done this myself and I'm only in my mid fifties where I've left something on the stove and walked away and forgot about it. And the next thing I know, I'm smelling something that's burning, right? Um, and my sense of smell is still pretty good. So um, anyhow, these uh, types of devices allow our elders to still maintain their independence for things like cooking, but it also takes out some of the danger involved uh, with you know, potentially forgetting things uh, on the stove or in the oven. Uh, in addition, I'm going to talk about how we can incorporate smart home devices into older adults' homes, not only to help them with some of their routines, but also to keep the adult children informed of, you know, their parents' activities and just so that they know that their, their parents are okay and, and caregivers as well uh, who are not family members. Um, in addition, um, Part of the routine for um, our, our elders who are in isolation is staying engaged and connected, especially if they're in isolation 
uh, in, a, in a community setting. So we'll talk about some of the technology uh, that helps with that. So in terms of uh, the various reminders for things like medication, uh, hydration, meal times, uh, those types of things, there's, um, there's stuff that we can use that's just built right into our smartphones. So if your um, you know if your um, elder person has a uh, a smartphone, um, you know just the calendar or the reminder feature uh, that's built into the iPhone uh, into Android phones uh, is you can program in all of these various reminders so that they are given a notification on a however regular basis that uh, they need to you know, take their medication, they need to, uh, you know, drink a glass of water, uh, uh, time to get up out of your chair and, you know, go for a walk, those types of things. Um, having a smartwatch uh, that pairs up with your smartphone. Um, also, those alerts can go right to your phone so that you've got something buzzing on your wrist telling you that you've got these reminders. Um, just in case, uh, you know, the phone's in the next room and maybe an hour goes by and the elder person doesn't even look at it. Um, in addition, you can program um, Siri or the Google Assistant to, um, to notify you uh, with diff various reminders. You know, you can, you can say, hey Siri, remind me to take my medication at three o'clock today, those types of things. Um, and uh, in addition, there are smart displays, which is effectively like a dedicated computer. Um, it's essentially a, uh, it's like, think of like having um, a Amazon Echo or a, 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 Google, um, uh, a Google Nest device with a screen on it. So, and uh, I'll show you a picture of what that looks like here in a minute. <clears throat> um, so stovetop and oven sensors. Um, now there are, there are kinds, there's a different variety, there's a few different varieties of these. There are the kind that literally just plug into the wall and then you plug the stove into the device and you essentially, uh, on the on the less uh, smart ones, shall we say, um, you basically set them up with a timer, so that if so much time elapses and the oven or the stove isn't turned off, it just turns it off by itself, and it and that's it. Pretty simple uh, operation. There are others that have more uh, sophisticated technology built in, uh, like motion sensors smoke detectors uh, that will also do the automatic shut off um, when uh, those, you know, certain things happen. You know, the motion sensor uh, would, re in this case, would reset the timer if, uh, you know, you say you walked away for five minutes and the timer's set for, I'm just hypothetically saying six minutes, you walk back in before the uh, the auto shutoff occurs, and it would essentially reset the timer. Um, so those are some of the different uh, features that are built in to some of these devices. Um, you can resume the uh, the operation of the stove uh, the stove unit uh, automatically or manually um, if uh, the auto shutoff occurs. Um, and then there's um, things like the smart monitor that I have uh, in the picture here on this slide. This is a, a device that has a corresponding app and you can essentially monitor the, uh, the stove operation from the smartphone. Um, so this is something that not only could the older person use uh, for essentially keeping an eye on their stove from like the next room, for example, but the um, the adult children or the caregivers that um, uh, the person is working with, they could have this app installed on their phone as well, and they would have the ability to remotely shut off the stove or the oven uh, using this smart device. Now keep in mind that any of the smart devices that I'm talking about, 
they assume that you have a wireless network in your home as well as an internet connection. So those are like, you know, the prerequisites for using any of the smart devices that I'm talking about uh, in this presentation today. Um, anyhow, so I thought these were pretty cool just because, um, you know, my, um, I have a, uh, well, my mother-in-law who passed away a few years ago, she um, had dementia and, um, you know, they, her, her husband, who's still alive, they basically stopped cooking in the conventional ways uh, several years ago because of an incident where, uh, you know, something was forgotten on the stove. So, I mean, they basically switched over to microwave use for like 90% of what they were cooking after that. So that's, uh, I thought this was particularly interesting technology from that perspective. Um, but in addition to um, uh, to things like um, uh, these these various systems that we've been talking about and the various smart devices that we've been talking about, um, you know, smart speakers uh, are really good for um, enabling you to just use your voice and you know get the um, get information, but also to schedule in various reminders, whether it is your caregiver, uh, the adult child, uh, or the older person themselves. I mean, anyone can, using their voice and certain keywords, program a smart speaker to remind you of anything or to do certain things at certain times. Um, but in addition, the smart speaker is also your, essentially your interface for all of the other types of smart technology that you've got in your home. So like smart plugs, for example, a smart plug is essentially is, is, is more or less just like what it sounds. It's a device that plugs into your um, uh, wall socket. Um, and it's essentially just a wall socket that plugs into the wall socket, but it's connected to your wireless network at home. And it also works with the, um, the hub or the, uh, the home app that uh, both Apple and uh, Android support that allows you to use things like Siri and Google Assistant to um, interface with these smart devices. So what does that mean? So if I have a smart plug and I have a lamp in my living room plugged into the smart plug and I've configured everything correctly, <clears throat> all I have to do is, is say, um, you know, hey Siri, turn on the living room lights and it will turn on that light that's associated with the living room light as far as it's concerned. Um, you can have that work, uh, you know, from anywhere. In addition, you could be, say, for example, in bed and you realize that, oh, geez, I left the lights on in the living room. You could, you could tell Siri to turn the living room lights off uh, from bed. So that's pretty handy. Um, <clears throat> the smart displays, again, they work in a similar manner um, as far as, um, things like the, um, uh, the Google Nest or the, um, uh, the Amazon Echo, uh, as far as being, they're essentially a smart speaker with a screen. So um, you can do the same things with a smart display as you can with a smart speaker as far as voice commands are concerned. Uh, but what you can also do with a smart display is you could, if you were, um, in that situation where uh, you've got like say a fall situation and you're using your smart devices to communicate with your caregivers, you could, you know, essentially say, you know, you know, Hey Siri, call John and John would um, be able to see you if John had the, um, uh, you know, the right app, uh, that allows you to work with the smart display. John could see what's going on with the webcam that's in the smart display. So you get that visual element as well. Um, smart thermostats, 
those are also handy um, for you know maintaining routines. You know, first off, you can program them to they're like a programmable thermostat where you can say you know heat comes on at 6 a.m. and maybe heat goes off you know from 12 to 5 something like that. Um, but in addition, if let's say for example that it was a super hot day and you needed to have uh, the air conditioning uh, working in someone's home, the, the caregiver can monitor through the smart thermostat what is the temperature at the home and um, can adjust things remotely if necessary. Same thing for the, uh, the older person uh, in the home uh, itself, they could use the app uh, to adjust the uh, thermostat from anywhere in the house without actually physically getting up. So, um, but I think the main thing with the smart thermostat is going to be the ability to monitor, uh, remotely monitor the temperature in the home uh, as far as caregivers and adult children are concerned. Um, in addition, uh, as far as some, there's, there's some pretty um, sophisticated smart sensors that are being developed. Um, uh, things, uh, things like door and window sensors. Um, I mean, door and window sensors, people are, are, are usually familiar with them as they relate to things like alarm systems, right? Um, but the, the smart door and window sensors they can not only be used for things like alarm systems, but they can also be used just so that you're aware that <clears throat> there's activity in the home uh, remotely. So a, um, an adult child or a caregiver can um, essentially be, uh, they can receive alerts um, or they can use an app to at least, uh, to at least, uh, um, monitor the use of certain doors and windows. Those doors could be cabinet doors in the kitchen, for example. So, you know, if, if you know that dad usually opens the kitchen cabinet to make his cup of coffee every morning by 7 a.m., and if you have not, um, you know, received a notification that dad opened the cabinet door, uh, you know, by say eight, um, you know, you might be concerned and you might want to give dad a call. Um, similarly, motion sensors can be used uh, to, uh, you know, you motion, people are familiar with motion sensors usually uh, for things like also alarm systems, but also uh, to like turn on exterior lights and those types of things. Um, motion sensors that have a, um, that are smart, um, you can also essentially monitor the fact that you have, you know, motion activity in the home at various points throughout the day so that you know that, you know, mom's up and around. Mom got out of her chair to go take her walk. Um, you know, mom got up this morning and, and uh, everything's fine. Um, those are some things that you can keep track of. Uh, there's a young woman um, who attends some of the... Uh, the the networking events that I think most of the everyone on this call has been on, uh, she's got a startup company that is uh, it's a smart sensor that detects hot water usage, so uh, it's still in development. But you know, so same kind of thing. You know that um, because uh, you know, dad got up to make his uh, got up and used the bathroom and washed his hands at at 6 a.m. Um, so you know that dad's uh, up and around. Um, you know, essentially monitoring normal routine activities. But the other thing that I think that is, that is key about most, most of these things is that they're non-invasive, they're non-intrusive, right? Like I've got cameras on the list here. I mean, having cameras in the home you know, you, you know, that's essentially like having a baby monitor, right? Um, and one of the big concerns with all of this stuff is not infantilizing our elders, right? Not making them feel like, like children, not making them feel less than in some, in some way. Um, 
cameras are definitely the most invasive of all of the technologies that I've discussed today. Now, you know, granted, you have with a smart display, you have a webcam uh, in that, but that's only going to be in use when you're on a video call, right? Like, like we are now. Um, but with the camera, you know, it's essentially like surveillance. Um, so on the one hand, I understand the need to have that visual picture. Um, on the other hand, um, I think maintaining, helping, helping our elders maintain their independence um, and also their dignity uh, is super important. And I think the non-invasive approach uh, is, and this is, this is purely my opinion, but I think it's backed up also by uh, others who have way more experience in the, in the field than I, uh, that those things are important. Anyhow, I just thought that was worth mentioning. Um, so staying engaged and connected is also a super important component of our elders' daily routines. Um, the image on the right there, um, that's a smart display. Um, essentially, that's the smart speaker that has the, uh, the monitor on it. It's got a built-in webcam. You can use that uh, to initiate uh, video chat, but it'll also, um, you can also, in the case of the, uh, uh, the Google, um, the Google uh, smart displays, you can set those up to um, uh, do a slideshow from Google Photos. So you could create, um, you could create like folders or albums on Google Photos, like say for example, um, you wanted to capture all of uh, um, all the old family pictures and digitize those. You could put those in a in an album and <clears throat> program the smart display to, you know, when it's not doing anything else, to have a slideshow and run through all of the uh, the old family photos, for example, or the vacation pictures from, uh, you know, mom's uh, vacation to Italy uh, or or whatever those types of things, um, and then you know apps like um, FaceTime, of course. FaceTime is built in to your Apple devices. Um, so that makes it, you know, you don't have to install anything. It's really easy. Um, <clears throat> but um, depending on which type of device you get um, for a smart display anyway, um, you know, you're, you're more or less locked into whatever it supports. So you, but they essentially, as I understand it, work more or less like a smartphone. So you can download and install apps on a smart display. I think the same way that you can with um, like a smartphone. And so you could potentially install Zoom on these things. I, although I'd, I probably should double check that. So don't, don't, don't hold me uh, accountable for that last statement. Um, anyhow, uh, and keeping, uh, keeping folks informed as far as, um, you know, how are our, how are our elders doing? Um, you know, if I, if my mom lives in, you know, if my mom is three states away or my mom is in another country, you know, how can I keep tabs on my mom uh, from afar? Um, or for that matter, maybe I'm just across town, but I don't want to have to drive across town uh, if I don't have to. What can I do? Uh, what are some of my options? Um, so, the some of the solutions uh, that are um, that I want to discuss. These are some of the things that they they address. They provide updates to the family um, or caregivers on their uh, uh, routines and activities. Um, they you can have direct communication uh, between your older adults, their caregivers, and, and their families. Um, you can track whether uh, they are taking their medication as they're supposed to. Um, physical activity, um, you know, nutrition, meal times, hydration, um, as well as, you know, using apps to connect with all of these various smart home devices, wearables, emergency alerts, uh, those types of things. Um, <clears throat> there's an app called My Fitness Pal that you can friend people. Uh, 
on through my fitness pal and you can see that <clears throat> so i could friend mom through my fitness pal and i could see that oh cool mom walked her m mom walked 10,000 steps today how cool is that um uh or those types of things um anyway and that's with apps um but there are also like entire systems developed that have um, the interface with a, usually with a, a finite set, but, but with a range of different devices that, uh, that are smart. Things like um, blood pressure cuffs, um, glucose monitors, um, uh, you know, wearable devices like, uh, like a Fitbit type of thing. Um, that are all integrated and you can essentially have an integrated, you know, sort of like top down look at all of this stuff through one uh, portal, one web portal or one app. So pretty, uh, pretty handy uh, in that respect. Um, let's see. And then finally, um, so let's, uh, so as far as some of the products that do this type of thing, um, these are just a, these are a list of products that I'm familiar with that do some of these types type of integrated uh, reporting for you. Um, Serenity Engage is a product that is basically it's more it's usually used in a community setting, but it can be used on an individual basis, and it's purely manual. It doesn't necessarily integrate with smart devices, uh, with things like a Fitbit or any like a, a smart monitor of some kind. Um, but uh, the caregiver can basically essentially have a very, very, um, you know, semi automated way of, um, or an easy way to do things like monitor uh, medication monitor things like um, uh, food consumption, activity levels, those types of things. Um, Routinify is a product that does interface with a, a variety of different uh, devices. In fact, let me see if I can switch. I'm going to get out of the presentation for a second. Can you see this? this other screen that I'm, that I put up. So for example, Routinify, it is, is this integrated approach that has a smart display that also talks with all of these various smart devices. So anything from like a glucose monitor, uh, a, a thermometer, uh, motion detectors, smart switches, uh, the uh, door, uh, the door sensors is labeled as contacts here. The smart button where you just literally push the button for like an alert type of thing and cameras. Um, so those are all, those all integrate with this one product that has a, um, I think it has an app and a, a web portal that essentially lets you keep track of all this stuff in one place. Um, and then the smart display also allows two-way communication. Um, I think either by voice and, and by video as well. So anyhow, um, those are some of the products out there that uh, do, uh, that, that either interface with smart devices or they at least provide you with a way, an app essentially, to manually track a lot of these things. And then the, the third product I have listed there is, it doesn't exactly do all of the things that we're describing, but it was, it's, it's interesting and worth noting. Hey Herbie is a product that plugs into your TV and uses your internet to um, first off, give you the ability to program in the various reminders that we've been talking about. And those reminders will pop up on the TV. So at, if, uh, if mom's supposed to take her, her um, morning meds, uh, you know, with breakfast and Mom's usually has breakfast between, you know, 7 and 8 a.m. <clears throat> and mom's watching the Today Show. 
an, a, an alert, a notification will pop up on the TV screen while she's watching the Today Show to say, hey, don't forget to take your meds uh, with breakfast. But also, Hey Herbie uh, allows you to do uh, with, with the, uh, an included uh, video or a webcam rather, allows you to do um, uh, video calls like this uh, only with your, uh, a set of pre-programmed people who have uh, the corresponding app either on a, on a smartphone. I think there might be a web version for a computer, uh, but definitely on mobile devices. Uh, allows you to in, initiate a, a dedicated call either to your caregiver, uh, your family members, and I believe you can have multiple people on the call with Hey Herbie as well. I don't think it's just a one-to-one -one thing. So, um, any other questions at this point? I know uh, Katie had to had to drop, um, so there were. I don't think she had any questions. But uh, do um, do either of you have any questions? And yeah, let me. I do. I do, Patrick. It's Audrey. Sure, Audrey. Hi. Um, that was great. I mean, you oh, did you. a fabulous job. And I was wondering. Now you recorded it. Is yes. it um, is it possible to get a copy of your presentation so I can share it with people? Sure, of course. Yeah, typically what I do with these uh, with these uh, these coffee talks is later today um, I will uh, send an email to everybody who signed up, and it'll give you links to um, both a PDF copy of the presentation as well as a link to the uh, the recording. And you can feel free to share that with your peeps as, as you see fit. Because I know one person that really needs your service to help. <laughs> okay, well, so, I'm happy yeah. to help. Well, that's yeah, good. You and bet. you're going to help me this afternoon. So yes. <laughs> possibly, possibly, yes. Yeah, cool. So um, no, that was really, really good. And I absolutely love my Alexa. I mean, I, I can't believe it. My girlfriend gave me, I gave away my, what is it called that Alexa goes to? Whoopsie, um, what is that? Um, oh, the, uh, the, 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 the device the itself. The device, what is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Echo. The I Echo, the I echo. have an Echo, yeah. right. She gave one to me for Christmas and her husband set me up with my, you know, with the smart plugins. So I can just say, hey, Alexa. And, but the one thing I'm afraid of, and can you tell me please, because they wanted, Alexa wanted to log into my, or connect to my phone with my contacts. And I'm afraid to do that. I, yeah, I mean, it's essentially anything that you, okay, so think about it this way. Um, <clears throat> if you had gotten the, the Google device, mm -hmm. the, the Google version of that, it would want to hook up with your, um, my phone's going off here, it's so funny. Yeah. I have an Android phone that's listening to me and anytime I say Google anything, it's like, oh, what's oh, up, yeah. what do you need? <laughs> um, anyhow. And my Alexa just woke up when she was talking about Alexa. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. really? Yeah, right. I was wondering yeah. if mine was good. I'm in a different room, so yeah. Right, <laughs> Any, anyhow. Um, <clears throat> but uh, if you'd gotten the Google version, it would have essentially wanted you to connect it to your Gmail account. And then it would by default, just have access to all of your contacts anyway, because they're all connected. Similar with Amazon. Uh -huh. um, if, um, if you had uh, connected it with an Amazon account or, um, or with your phone as it, as it wanted to, then yeah, it would just grab all of your contacts. Now, do they do anything with that information? They're, they're, I don't know. I mean, there's probably some marketing business going on behind the scenes that we don't know about that your contacts might get uh, as a result of that. But I can't say definitively that Amazon is going to take your contacts and spam them uh, with whatever. Um, but, but what about, I think it also wanted like access almost, I, I'm not positive about this, but access to like my 
emails, my computer, so that, so that, you know, and I'm, I'm concerned about like bank accounts and I'm concerned also, and this is where I want some help from you to have, I have a Chromebook and I don't mm -hmm. like the fact that it saves everything on the drive. I mean, everything. And I've erased a lot, but I think mm -hmm. it's still there somehow. And, and so is that, is that something that it would do, the, the Alexa? I don't think so. Well, I mean, so Amazon will only, it'll only access the things that you give it permission to access. So it's, and it's going to be very, it should be very like discreet, specific. very specific. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if you say I can only access my contacts, that's probably okay. If you say it can access your, if, if you give it an email address beyond just sending you emails that you may not want, um, I don't think it's going to like be probing anything on your computer right. okay. and, and, <laughs> and, and, har and harvesting things like, you know, okay. bank account information and, or that uh, sort of yeah. thing. Okay. So, All right. Well, um, that's cool. On the one hand, on the other hand, I also know that there have been privacy concerns um, surrounding smart speakers and, you know, when are they listening? When are they not listening? You know, they're supposedly they're only listening for the uh, the wake word, um, which in the case in your case is going to be you know the the word that starts with a, and um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and um, but uh, is it recording anything? You know, for Amazon's purposes when uh, when you're using it, um, I know that they were they were recording things for a while and they do record things for their AI to get smarter. Um, were there, and there was also concern about people listening to like actual people listening to these recordings. Mm -hmm. um, and Amazon and Google have gone way out of their way to try and assure people that no, we're not spying on you. Right. Um, right. So yeah. Yeah. Anyhow. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't know who Absolutely. the other person is, but who are you? Who's well, the other I'm, person? So I'm Susan Mortensen, and um, I actually work for ADT uh, Medical Alert, and I really uh, appreciate the way you covered it. I think that there's yeah. the right solution for, for different people and, and where they are and how comfortable they are with technology. I think you covered it beautifully. I think, oh, yes, thank you. And, and, your, and your coverage was, was real good. The main thing, you know, that you might um, want to point add with the as far as the medical alert situation is that Wi-Fi isn't necessary, and that's and there's a lot of a lot of folks out there that don't, you know, have Wi-Fi or you know don't want sure. it, and that's that's probably the one difference. But but you know people are getting more and more um, you know tech savvy, and there's some wonderful solutions out there, and you covered it very well, Patrick. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, no, I appreciate that feedback very much. <clears throat> Um, also, just uh, as an FYI, I've got um, some more Tech Coffee scheduled uh, in a, a couple of weeks here. I'm uh, going to be talking about older adults and social media. I have a guest for that one. Her name is Joyce Foistel. Her business is called um, Boomer's Social Media Tutor. And she works with folks of all ages, but she's, but she's definitely focused on uh, the boomer population as far as their um, interest in social media. She's probably going to focus mostly on Facebook, but she's also going to talk about uh, LinkedIn as a tool for vetting people uh, for older, for older folks mm -hmm. um, as, as well as, um, and we'll, and we'll touch on some other social media uh, platforms out there as well. Uh, and then in October, I'm going to be talking about, cutting the cord and using streaming services and what mm -hmm. are, what's involved with that. So, uh, and then I'll probably, I'm sorry, what? That can save so much money for people that are paying a yeah. you know, hundred dollars for, for, um, you know, make the cable and, and so right. many of our seniors are, you know, just because they don't know that there's options. So that's great. Yeah. Thank you. So anyhow, anyhow, um, 
Uh, but this, so uh, all the links are in this uh, presentation are, will be clickable uh, when uh, you download the PDF. Um, whoops. Anyhow, that's all I had for today. Uh, I think you folks already have my contact info, but that's included in the slides. And thank you for joining today. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And so to the other person, I'm Audrey Krebs, by the way. Hi. <laughs> Nice and send you. me send me your contact, Suzanne. Send me your contact sure. information. Do you have um, um, email somewhere here in chat, maybe? Or yeah, you can I put it in the I chat. Can... Yeah. Oh, I didn't put it in the chat. That's right. Mm -hmm. I forgot about the chat. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to use the chat for that. And, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's thanks, see. Thanks for joining oh. today. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you, Patrick. Can we stay on to just put our contact information in? Okay, um, can you see me?